So and I had, I didn't know what a podiatrist was. For yeah, he's the a most, foot doctor. Yeah, yeah. The whole time I'm yeah. like, what is what is this cool doctor I have access to now? Do you ever uh, need anyone to look at your feet? Yeah, I'm like, oh. Uh, and then I, part of me was like, maybe, I guess maybe this is like hack as hell. But like, do people say to him like 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 it's a foot fetish sort of job to go into? Like, I don't know. I'm sure that he would be a great guest to talk about that kind of stuff. Yeah. He's probably got great stories. He's a funny dude. Like it was so crazy because so are we st- are we recording? Yeah, we are recording. All right, cool. So but we listen. should introduce. You know. Yeah. So listen, I'm Dr. Judd. This is close the door behind you. Welcome. We've got a special guest. First of all, as always, we have Christos, uh, our What's co-host, up? and we've got Sean Milia, who is a rising star comic here in New York Dude, City. He's already just got risen, off a tour. bro. He's already risen. He has guys, risen like Christ, like chill. Christos. No, no, Riz like Gen Z though. He's got he's oh, risen. Oh, yeah, he's that risen. sort of Riz. Yeah. Welcome, not really. Sean. Thanks. Welcome. Thanks yeah. for having me, Dr. Judd. It's my pleasure, man. It's <laughs> yeah. our pleasure. Yeah, thank you as well. Uh, good to be here. Um, I forget I had something to Oh, my last name is pronounced Malay. Oh, uh, Malay, excuse yeah. me. No, oh, no really? worries. Yeah. Do, does Sean a lot of Malay. people mess that up? Uh, yeah, normally I don't even correct them, but I was like, you know what? <laughs> this time I'm going to do it Malay. because what? Yes, Malay. Malay. I was I was trying to relate it back to you being a doctor somehow, but I couldn't think of it. Malady. Uh, so Malady, uh, yep. Gay I got called in high school. Sean, the first the first time that I ever uh, met you, or actually not met you, but I saw you. I saw you in an open mic a couple years ago. It was actually on my birthday. It was the first open mic that I ever did. And you actually were doing a bit about like I don't know, Accutane or something like that. Do you remember oh, right. that? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did. I have since taken Accutane <laughs> to the full extent. It's like six months or Dude, eight months. Yeah. You you have some clear skin. Thanks. Man. Clearly, yeah. somebody did a good job. Yeah, Mount Sinai. It was a gay doctor that made me feel very safe. And like, he, I felt like his, like, I was like his prize that he was creating because he'd be like, he, I don't know. He just made me feel like I went there for something unrelated. Right. I had like a freckle on my, uh, uh-huh. I still have it. And I just saw it and I'm a hypochondriac and I was like, oh, it's got to be cancer. And I go there. He's like, no, this is fine. But look at all this acne. What if we clean you up? And I'm like, oh, sure. And then every month I went and he was like, yeah, looking great. And I'm like, Thank, thanks to you, bro. Thanks to you. So. Did, Did you put his finger in your butt? scars or something? No, I just had a ton of acne. Did, I, oh. did he put his finger in my butt? <laughs> no, no. He didn't do that. It's he just didn't. to be a comprehensive, you know, like exam you know sometimes yeah yeah he's got to check out my internal see how the skin on the inside of me is i mean that's Dude. what my doctor tells me <laughs> if i was a doctor like that would be before even blood pressure check. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's see if you got any pimples in there <laughs> no but he was cool he was uh professional and he, cool. he put me on to some comedian that i still follow to this day oh cool nice. so what like what have you been up to lately um, actually, I just want to talk about the Accutane for the. <laughs> uh, no, uh, nothing really. Just working and uh, same old shit. I know. Weed well, and- I ca- I called you, you know, to invite you to the show that Christos is producing tonight, and uh, that you know you'd be a headlining at. But you were uh, you were on tour. So tell me about that tour. Oh yeah, it was awesome. Uh, we <laughs> no, that sounded sarcastic. It was cool. We we didn't have many people turn out, and the ones that did came for Demetrius. So oh, Demetrius. Who's it? so Demetrius? What's Demetrius' last name? Uh, Fields. Okay, yeah. cool. So what what towns did you get? You guys went to what Detroit? Uh, uh, we ended up only doing <laughs> Detroit and Chicago. Cool. Uh, yeah, those are different places, right? <laughs> I had to think about. <laughs> um, yeah, um, and actually, Detroit. There was like a ton of people, but that was because it's from where Demetrius. That's was where from. he's from. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, we had other shows that we uh, canceled. Um, you yeah. can't. Why'd you cancel? Them? Uh, you know, it was just like the police in the area were like, too many people are trying to go, <laughs> and we think it's a public hazard. They thought it was uh, going to be like another January 6th, so they are just like, yeah, they stand were like, down. Yeah, we've <laughs> never seen this many tickets sold to such a small venue, so we had to, we had to cancel, really. Uh, well, tell us, tell us about that, because that's kind of interesting, right? Like, you're... You're someone who not only do you do stand up, but you have very famous sketches, right? Like you have you have that. Uh, I wouldn't say famous. Sketches. I think so, dude. They just I have got friends. like a lot of views. I yeah, guess, but, but but they're hilarious. Like the private investigator that has sex with the uh, uh, <laughs> yeah with, yeah <laughs> with thanks. The people. So like when you go on tour like that, uh, you know, is it? Like, okay, so you're at a different stage than a lot of other comics, right? Where it's like you have been presented several routes, and one of them is like 
to run your own shows? Like what's the kind of appeal of doing that versus like an alternative route? Um, well, I mean, I guess in the case of touring, like that was just Austin Locke hitting me up and saying, Hey, do you want to do this? You know, a few months from now. And I was like, yeah, that sounds fun. Um, so that, that's not really like I want to produce shows or anything. <laughs> um, it's just more like that was like, he asked me to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, like the views online, I guess it's not like stand up content. And also I feel like people follow for one, th like, it's like hard to build a lasting impression on people just from TikToks, you know, I gotta like, it, like, I feel like it's like people see the number and they think, oh, well, he made it or whatever. But it's like, nah, like, it's just like, it feels like GTA. I like have a bunch of fake money or something. Yeah. 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 At least, and, and, you know, not to shit, like, I'm still grateful for whatever I, yeah. I have achieved thus far. But yeah, it just doesn't like translate to. How did you, sales. how did you start? Uh, how did you get involved? Like, did you go to film school or anything? Cause I, at the first, the first thing I saw, I guess you have a lot of content on social media, but I'm, you know, an old man. So I'm not really like that prevalent on social media or I didn't really yeah, get savvy. involved. But uh, I know this that thing called YouTube. Yeah. I believe it's called YouTube. Uh, and I saw that you had a movie on YouTube. Yeah. God and bless. it was like uh, you're gonna have a gross job, you know? <laughs> But one thing uh, since we're gonna cut that out anyway, but uh, yeah. one thing is you keep touching this and I totally feel you because I have A D D too. Oh, you can hear it. Yeah, you could totally hear it. But uh, uh, if, if you want something to play with you could take one of my rings or my off. penis. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like allergic to my cat and so I don't know why it, if like it, that's why I said you're have allergic a cat? to your own cat. Yeah, I had a, I got a you're cat. allergic to cats and you have a cat. Uh, yeah, I got a cat in May and I didn't know I was allergic to cats <laughs> until I got it. And he's like super hairy. Like, dude, he's the worst cat to have if you're allergic to cats. I'd have, <laughs> I'm gonna have an asthma attack just sitting next to you. I'm so I, to well, cats I don't know why all dogs. of a sudden it's hitting me. Um, do you guys have a dog or a cat? I have a dog, you do, yeah. yeah, but I don't think it wouldn't do that. I wouldn't just be able to like. Well, he's allergic to my dog, and when he comes over, but and he loves my dog. Oh, dogs are great, yeah, yeah. but I am allergic to them as yeah. well. Oh, really? Yeah, I dogs. don't have any hair on them because when I get hair on me, I rub like I actually hate dirt and like yeah, dust. Yeah, yeah. So when my dog comes on my stuff and like gets it hairy, yeah, like I become an abusive. Like, yeah, I, that's yeah. so funny because I was gonna like jokingly say that, and then you already, yeah, um, yeah. No, my cat leaves hair everywhere too. It's so annoying. But, uh, yeah. What were you? Sorry, you were asking me. Something oh no, I was just I... saying like I saw that movie you did. I don't know how long ago that was, but it was hilarious. Like the one where you're a uh, you're a student and you get picked up. On the street, outside of a bar, oh, by right. a woman. Was that like a film, <laughs> like a film project for school, or what yeah. it was hilarious? Yeah, it was like my senior thesis film. <laughs> uh, you get like, uh, it was cool. You get like, it's a year long class, uh, or sometimes it's half a year. But I think I did the year one, and you basically you write a script for the first half, and then second half they give you like a bunch of equipment, and you just like make the cool. film cool. yeah it's like 20 pages or something i love that yeah check that out on youtube check out sean Malay's. i'm also acting in one all right I, I did half of it already it's like i'm a monk in the medieval times you got a dude i one? love that one yeah that well, was so fun that well so that was just me in costume for that movie uh, or short film the, the uh, interview which came first the short film or the interview uh, the like... short film's not even done being made yet i oh. was just in costume like on the set and i was like oh it'd be fun to make a tiktok yeah so, so i just dude that it. was hilarious thanks yeah um so yeah that's gonna be that's also an nyu short film so hopefully cool. hopefully you enjoy that are one you, as are much. you still in school no oh, okay. no i'm 27 now 27 okay. yeah yeah you're ancient uh, I know. I feel it, dude. I feel it. Well, it's okay because Kurt Cobain died at 27. I know. I got to make it to 28. Yeah, that's yeah. Special, all that shit. But that's uh, a really special age. When, gotta watch it. Have a careful ear. Well, yeah. When you uh, when I met you at an open mic, or or the, I saw you a different time. I don't know. I, I guess I could. There was you were with a girl, a woman. Okay. Uh, a child. No, I'm just kidding. A woman. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but uh, you were just talking to me. Jet. You don't have a girlfriend currently. I do. Okay, but I wonder if it's the same person. But she <laughs> was, was she just Japanese. Like, yeah, maybe. yeah. Then it's the same. Oh, okay. okay. It was yeah. just yeah. funny because she was like on your back. Like <laughs> she was just being like lovey, but it was right. just in, in my head. I was like, it made me laugh because it looked like you were like wearing her like a backpack <laughs> while you were talking <laughs> while you were talking to me, and it cracked me up. But I didn't want to like laugh and then have to explain to you why I was laughing. You should have laughed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah. That's no. Funny. 
So you can take that. And so like, yeah, she's uh, she's she's hilarious, man. She, uh, she it's, it's funny because she like barely speaks English, which makes it perfect because like <laughs> she could complain about things. I have no idea what she's talking about. Yeah. Which is like makes her the perfect mate. How how how, how <laughs> yeah. little does she speak English? Like, you know, we, she like sign languages things to me, like not real sign language, but she just kind <laughs> yeah. of points and stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> how did you meet her? Uh, uh, Japanese titty fuck.com. <laughs> you go <laughs> right before you have to. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, you're like, oh, uh, patient. <laughs> We're going to pause for a commercial break. Yeah. <laughs> this is a misogyny this is the, this is the, <laughs> Um No, I mean, I'm sure she's like fulfilled otherwise. That's cool. Um, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Not like we'll that. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> Insert joke here. <laughs> Sorry, let's get back. What about you? You have a girlfriend? Uh, no. That's right. You've got like... Dude, why that. would he have a girlfriend? Look at his jaw. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, like he's slaying. Oh, I thought he's it was the slaying. other... I thought nah. he was saying... No, oh, I nah, see. You're slaying, dude. No, I have a simple jack haircut, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't work. Maybe you should... Where is that in? Like Vietnam or Cambodia? Um... Where they love no, him. I dude, I I, I actually forget was where at, that was. I was at the stand one night, and literally, like the girls at the front desk were looking at his picture, and they were like, "Who is that?" Bubba? And I'm like, "I'm like, oh, I know him." And they're like, you know, and they were literally like perving on you. I told you, I texted. Yeah, you. that I, you, I, who was it though? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was like a. They're all pretty cute, right? That worked there. I mean, I don't know. I, I had a couple drinks. Oh, but she was working there. Yeah, they were like, yeah, yeah. Was they like are working generally there. attractive. Yeah, at the stand. I love that place. The stand's awesome. Shout out to the stand. The stand's like the only comedy club in the world that is like has like incredible food. They serve drinks in like beautiful glasses. Like the boot, like everything is just like it's top notch there. I love that place. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what's it like being a doctor? How long did you go to school? Uh, way too not long. Not enough. Not, yeah. <laughs> not enough. Dude. Yeah. Don't, not enough. Don't, don't go enough. to this guy in an emergency. <laughs> dude, I've been a doctor for like, man, 24 years. Wow. Have you oh, ever, in a, a, like in a public setting, had to like use your doctor abilities? Have you had to, Unfortunately, like... yeah, all the time. Really? Yeah. I like, mean, actually, literally just last week, not even last week, two days ago, I was on an airplane flight coming back from Las Vegas and got called... Uh, to attend to somebody and literally it's like it's not even an isolated incident 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 like that's the fifth time that's happened on an airplane so do you in those moments when they call upon you do you feel a little bit like sick i get to like use it like does it feel like you're wielding this cool power or is it more like <laughs> fuck i have to go to work on a plane that I it's like so, it's a little bit of both and I you mean, care like, about them being injured or whatever the but. well at first it was really cool like when you first up but then like what happens is that like you you put yourself in a very like let's say like I have this one joke and it's actually based on a true story about somebody who literally like was collapsed on the plane and had no pulse and I was doing CPR on that person and like they were essentially dead and I thank God everything worked out well but you know when you're in those situations it's like a high liability situation and a lot of times like you know, they'll call for a doctor. There'll be five doctors on that plane and nobody's going to volunteer just because the majority of doctors are not comfortable resuscitating people. Like I happen to be an emergency physician. So like, that's kind of what we do every day. So I do that stuff in my sleep. But if you were just to like have an ophthalmologist go and try to resuscitate somebody, like I know they probably took like, you know, you know, uh, advanced cardiac life support at some point, but they're going to have no comfort in resuscitating you know, somebody on the plane that's getting, you know. When you say it's high liability, what does that mean? Like, if you don't save them, then you're... Yeah, I mean, you're... You get, unfortunately, uh, you know, you get a... <laughs> get sued, man. It's crazy. Really? So, But yeah. then what... But would you also be sued if you weren't... Uh, if you didn't step up? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I step up every time just because, like, it, it annoys me to see people not doing the correct thing. Yeah. So, I mean, every time... I always... I don't know what... Whatever. I... I like you were saying, I enjoy it, um, but I just I enjoy it. And, you know, when people like, I guess I could tell that they're appreciative, it's cool. But a lot of times, like, you know, like like, for example, on that particular flight, I basically saved this guy's life. I mean, he was essentially dead. And, um, you know, you would think that maybe like the airline might maybe comp my flight. Yeah, yeah. None they, of that. Well, they gave me something similar. They gave me a, a case of cookies. They were like the good kind, though. 
The one, oh, the like one the you Biscoff only get one of. Yeah. 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 They gave me the whole, they're like, here, thank you so much. On the, <laughs> so like, that was right cool. as you were leaving the Yeah, flight. as I was leaving, as like my consolation prize. Dude, what? Yeah, but then you could, like, couldn't you, like, I guess this would be kind of like. I'm not even, dude, I'm not even exaggerating. I was like, okay, like, thank you. That's so generous of you. Thank yeah, you so yeah. much. Like, dude, meanwhile, like, I was, I checked in my bag late and it was $100 to check my, like, carry on at the gate. <laughs> yeah, but you could sell those cookies and make that hundred bucks back. I suppose you're right. I you just could didn't really email. take advantage of it. You could be like, hey, like, can I at least get like some, you know? Some it's credit? funny. So it's so funny that you say that because literally this last one that just happened on Delta, the lady's like, um, what, what's your what's your seat number and stuff? And she's like, we're gonna send you a hundred dollar credit. And I'm like, yeah, okay, thanks so much. Meanwhile, like the plane was like, whatever. I, I sent him a bill. Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's going to happen with that, but yeah. from now on, I'm sending him a bill. That's fine. Yeah, because if I guess if I was a doctor, I would probably – I would just be late like because I'd be like, ah, I'd probably be too lazy to even like do anything about it. I'm I not like. sending I'm not sending the patient a bill. I'm sending – The plane, yeah. The plane. Yeah. I mean, at least they could comp my flight. Yeah, at right. Least. Like it's – so in other words, like – so the answer is like, yeah, like I love doing what I do, but – Oh, when you're not appreciative for it, it just kind of you're like, it just makes you feel kind of like a pile of dog shit. Well, what if I okay? Here's here's devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. If that person died on the plane because yeah. you weren't there, right? How would that would that have negatively impacted the plane like them at all? Oh, I'm sure. I don't think they would. I don't think so. If somebody dies on an airplane, you don't think they're getting sued? Dude, people are so ready to go home. Like, at least everyone on the plane would be like, I I'm just I'm I guess. I'm home. Well, yeah, my question then would be the lawsuit thing. I guess because in my mind, are you doing are you doing the plane people a service? Or are you just kind of like, they're just like, yeah. figure it out. We're going to get the plane to where it's supposed I to don't, go. Listen, I, think, I don't think there's really any like, I, I can guarantee you that, like, for example, on that one flight where I was doing CPR, and I resuscitated that guy. When I got off the plane and I was in the baggage claim, I had literally four different doctors walk up to me who were on that plane who did not identify themselves and were like, dude, that was so cool that you got up. You know, I'm a radiologist, you know, and, uh, and I'm like, oh, great. Another guy was a pain doctor. He was like, yeah, dude, I do pain, blah, blah, blah. Another person was like, I think a psychiatrist. But all these people were qualified MDs, medical doctors, and none of them even volunteered to even hold an IV bag, let alone actually resuscitate the guy. The guy was dead. Yeah. Well, well isn't it because most doctors are pussies, though? <laughs> no comment. Interesting. <laughs> this web of I'm so intrigued. No comment. You're asking me all these questions about me. Yeah, about, I know. Let's like, get back to no, you. No, but I'm like, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's your pod. Let's so turn what you want to do? Airplane around. But so let's get back to you. So like, what, what, uh, so what's, what's next? So you got this. Oh, there's uh, a heart attack on the plane. You gotta be, a, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be a doctor again. Sorry. <laughs> no, what were you gonna say? So like, what's, so what's next? So you got, uh, well, t first of all, you're, you're headlining an incredible show tonight. Uh, it's very close yes, behind very you true, over at true. the Whiskey Cellar in the East Village in New York City. And uh, and then what else you got going on? Um, what else I got going on? You know, just uh, work and nothing really to... What kind, What do you do? Do you have a, a job, like, outside of doing comedy? Um, yeah, nothing that would, like, put me uh, in the... <laughs> like, to put me... Are you comfortable me... talking about it? Because don't yeah. you work at VaynerMedia? Yeah, yeah. I, I work at Vayner. I do, like, consultant oh, cool. stuff. So, basically, I'll make, like, TikToks. Like, tomorrow I'm going to Sam's Club in New oh, Jersey that's cool. to, like, make videos for them cool. and stuff. Yeah. VaynerMedia is Ga Gary Vaynerchuk? Yeah. Oh, Which, also, nice. I'm glad that you guys... He's awesome. Led me to this point where I had to say the Sam's Club thing because I think I would have forgot that I had to be there tomorrow. <laughs> I genuinely would have forgot about that, so I'm glad that you asked. But, yeah, so it's pretty, cool. like, underwhelming. It's just, like, like it's a remote job a lot of the time. No, but it's a creative outlet. I mean, it's it's consistent with what... For like, sure. No, yeah. it's awesome. Well, I also, I mean, you know, forgive my presumptuousness, but Please. I feel like, it, you know, it actually is aligned with what you want to do, right? Like, as far as, like, your goal. It's not, like, a side job, right? Like, um, I mean, yeah, I don't really want to climb the corporate ladder there and be, like, a commercial or, like, an ad person. Like, uh -huh. it's very... Like, you still... The higher you go, it's, like... Google meetings and like right. slides and shit. So yeah, like, I'm in. I was in advertising. Yeah, so I, know the, yeah. I don't really want to do that, but like it is a good place to be. I meet people that I think you know. It's good for networking and meeting and, and stuff like that. And 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 yeah, staying creative, having to think of stuff for brands is cool. But overall, like you know, it's not it's not what I want to do. So forever. what is it that you want to do? 
Um, I guess like I'm not like even positive. I would say like I went to film school. I think I would like to do something with movies and maybe TV or whatever. But overall, I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. But like okay, you don't have to have a, like a ten year plan. But like in your one year plan, where what's like the path forward? <laughs> um. Hmm. One year. Yeah, like for twenty twenty four. I'm trying to read all of year. Shakespeare. I read eighteen plays in uh in college and uh nice. there's thirty eight, so I'm trying to read all of them this year. What's your top three? Um Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. I like Richard the Third as well. Okay. And hmm. My fake drum roll. Uh do you read them in old English? That's yeah, so you, you're not allowed to change Shakespeare. Ugh. No, I read strictly the No Fear ones, <laughs> which is like no that uh, I actually do use that. But I read the Cliff Notes, or I, um, excuse me, I read the Cliff Notes. That's what you want to hear from me. Hey, that's cool. If you know all the <laughs> plots, that's still cool, I guess. But yeah, I actually know But Soft for what? Yeah, I know that. Oh, like, come on. You almost had it. It's, but it's... Soft for Yonder Wander Lights. It is the East, and Juliet is the Sun. Uh, arise, fair son, for she is right. Yeah, Something congratulations. Like that fucking lations. that was you. 1987. That is pretty good for that long ago. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but I do have a like it's the Norton Shakespeare is like what in college they told us to get, and it's like they just like it's the how it was written, but then there's like it's like every other line. Well, every other line is like either a footnote at the bottom, there's something that's like it's like oh. Right, because of the colloquialisms in the Shakespearean yeah. time. That or he'll, he, like, yeah. reference something I've never... Like, he'll be like... Like, what was the one that was... It was pretty cool, actually. It was, like, uh, like one king... Or one guy that was trying to become king, they killed him. I think it was this, like, the Duke of York or whatever. But, mm -hmm. like, after... They beheaded him, and they put his head on a bridge, and they put a paper crown on mm -hmm. it. And it's, like... It was supposed to symbolize, like... The, here's your crown it's paper yeah and like so that was a footnote it's like oh when they talk about the paper crown they're referring to this so it's cool for that and then right. i'll actually read the no fear which is like just like the english like it's super modernized like not really cool like, but you know did you know that when you perform shakespeare you're not allowed to do like the abbreviated like it's taboo right, right. Like, you know or at least it's seen as like low class like you have to do shakespeare as it's written. Right. Um, can you wear outfits? You, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. No, for right. sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> Only can naked. Can you do it like... Do you you got to wear a, a purple rude shirt. And, like. All the chicks used to be played by... Uh, Men. Boy. Well, yeah. but Well, I think it was like boys. Oh. Like young boys. Mm. Epstein. Maybe, I guess, maybe also men as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Cool. All right. That's good. Shakespeare. First of all, on the Greeks horizon. were doing that forever. Like Shakespeare was a big fan of Greek theater and stuff, so yeah. I could understand that. He's Greek, by the way. Yeah. Oh, Greek. Surprise. <laughs> yeah, my my because of my chiseled jawline and <laughs> you look like a Greek statue. Yeah, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Per pretty much. I respect it. If I was a philosopher and you were a little boy, I'd definitely. Hell yeah, I I appreciate that. I appreciate. Yeah. It. If I was a little boy and you yeah. were a philosopher, <laughs> yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd go for it. Yeah. What do you so What are you doing as far as like uh, what's your process as far as writing comedy and like do you take time each day and like set aside like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and be like, hey, I'm just gonna write comedy like at this time in the day or no. Not at all. Uh, okay. I kind of like uh, right now. It's just like I'll have the shows, mm -hmm. and then that will force me to flesh out something. I mean, I'll write down stuff as it comes to me, yeah, uh, all the time. But like, as far as organizing and trying to write the bits out, it's like usually because of the pressure of a show. Mm -hmm. So if you have something, another, but you probably have like a ton of material. I know you already have a ton of material that you probably reuse, refine, et cetera, et cetera. But do you just like when you get an idea, like? You just kind of then run to a quiet area and start writing it down, or like, do you? Oh use no, I'll a, take out my phone right in front of you. <laughs> you could be mid convo, right? And be like, I'll right, do right. It right there. And start like type, type in it, yeah. yeah. Right, to like, not lose the inspiration. Uh, yeah. yeah, and also because I'm just like impulsive and addicted to my phone, probably as well. <laughs> but yeah. Well, that's a that brings up a good point. So like, you know, obviously not at your level, but I've had like a few viral videos too. And that kind of makes you chase that dragon a little bit. For right? sure. Um, so could you describe a little bit of what you feel? Yeah. I mean, it's just like when it's going viral, it's like super exciting. And you kind of like, you know, it. Uh, it's like I'll watch the video over and over again. And I'll read the comments. I'm like, yeah, like I'm the man. And then like, 
And then like uh, you do it enough time, for, then you start to realize, oh, like, like in the mo- at least the first time, it feels like, oh, I'm famous or I made it, right? And then like you realize, oh, people watch it and move on, they forget, and it kind of just like is a fleeting feeling. So, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, so essentially, to your tolerance rises. It's almost like oh, like a million views at first is like holy shit, but then eventually you only want five million views or whatever. Like right. Um, it's never but, enough. Yeah, which I, I don't feel that as much anymore. I'm kind of like, I'm not like super, like I, I feel less like I need to have a viral video all the time. But um, yeah, it definitely can be addictive. It's fun to watch people that go viral uh, like for the first time and how they re- react. Like my buddy Derek was like, he went, he got like 40 million views and for like a week, I, I remember him just like, for rightful reason, but he's walking around like he thinks he's the man, and like, <laughs> and like you know, they, they then the, him and the buddy he wrote it with are kind of argue about like what who, what the next thing should be, and like oh, we, should we do this again? And like it's just like a boy band, and it's fun to see how people like let it go to their heads. Yeah. Everybody does it. I did it too, but yeah, it's fun to like see it from like a, a seasoned veteran's <laughs> perspective. I've never gotten viral from something I felt good about. Interesting. <laughs> so, like, I've only gotten viral when people are shitting on me. Interesting. <laughs> so, so I've never, like, walked around with that. It's more like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, well, why do you not, like, do you not delete it after that occurs? Or how do you feel, like, they're shitting on you and what is the thought process? No, I'm, like, purposely making fun of myself. I see, I see. You know, and it's like, you know. But uh, if it doesn't purpose. feel good, then why do you do it? Uh, cause I think it's hilarious. I see. Like I put content out that I think is funny. I see. And like, I, see. I think self deprecating humor is funny. Okay. You know? Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm stuck sort of trying to chase that dragon, right? Mm. Like, you know, now, like you said, like being worse and worse enough. to yourself. Yeah. No, it's not necessarily being worse and worse to myself, but it's also like, you know, as you know, like sometimes you're like, what the fuck? Why do people like this video and not like this one that yeah. I took a lot of time to make? You right. Know? Sometimes I will go back. I can't watch a lot. Like pretty much every video I've made at this point, I just like kind of cringe at. So I don't really, I don't know. It's uh, You made a really cool video about uh, writing a joke. You had Mark Norman on Yeah, it, that like, was fun. Super cool. Would like, you do that you- again? Yeah, I would do that again. I mean, that one's like we've done it like once a year for like the past three years, mm-hmm. essentially. That's so. awesome. I mean, people want to like that's very helpful for you know up and coming comedians to figure out how to like come up with a process. For sure, so, and it's helpful like, for me. I mean, I get to sit with them for an hour and even work on my own idea, and then like see comments where people are like either you know yay or nay on it. So yeah, that, that's fun too. What it like? Ha- so kind of like give us like the give us the abridged like Cliff Notes version of that. Like, how do you write a joke? Um, I, yeah, it's just like you think of something funny or li- I, like, uh, like you're, you just be honest to somebody about li- like the ZocDoc thing I told you about earlier. Like, um, I was saying to him how dating apps have conditioned me. So like when I go on ZocDoc to look for a doctor, I like inevitably end up looking for the hottest doctor. <laughs> so like, just like something like that, it's a truthful thing. And then male or female, <laughs> female, oh, female, okay, all right. uh, yeah, I'm like, yeah, then I, she could have one profile. star, but I'm like, well, you know, I got to take my pants off in front of her, so that's <laughs> good. No, I, I don't do that. Yeah, something <laughs> but, to be proud of. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like something like that, then it's like, oh, okay, where can you take this fun idea? And so it's really just like, I guess the question is, how do you get the initial premise? And for me, it's just through through life yeah. and, and thinking about stuff. It's weird. It's like if you sometimes, I mean, not that my ideas are fantastic or anything but sometimes like you'll just be like in this it's like they just come to you i don't know where the hell they come from and they just arrive in your head and then like like you were saying you'll be in the middle of a conversation you have to like you're like hold that thought you have to write it down and then it's like from like that's the that's almost like the easy part like somebody gave you the gift of the premise but then to actually fine tune it and make it into a deliverable joke with a setup and a punchline at least for me, that's like very challenging. Like I could tell stories all day long. Like I feel like I have a lot of stories to tell, and then people will be like, "Dude, like, can we please have a punchline?" And right, I'm right. Like, oh, I gotta, I gotta. There has to be a punchline. Shit. Yeah, yeah. The stories are definitely the hardest thing to do. That I feel like I'm still. I mean, I'm, uh, for all, oh, of it, really? I'm still figuring out. But yeah, the stories is like, 
I mean, most times when it comes to a story, like it ends up being, it's like some idea that is then fabricated. It's never been like, it's never been like the true story that gets like the best laugh, I feel like. What's the hard part of the story that you find? Like the ending or like a punchline? What's, what's hard about it? Um, it's just like stories aren't inherently going to make people laugh, right? Like they're going to, there might be interesting, but like, it's not going to like, I feel like, like, uh, like you and the doctor, like on the plane, like that is a good story. I've been fascinated the whole time. It's like an experience I've never, it's so cool to me. But it's not funny, right? But you could make yeah. it funny, or, or or it was if funny. If you embellish it, yeah. yeah. Or even, I mean, yes, you could lie to make it have a better ending. But like you were saying things that were funny about like the other doctors on the plane not speaking <laughs> up, or like there's yeah. things in there that could get laughs. So it's like kind of identifying those things. I have a jo- I have a joke tonight. I want you to watch. Okay. And it, it it actually revolves around that situation. It has like you know there's some like act out. There's some like, oh, what if I did this or whatever? Right. Um, so I try to like, you know, take that story and I don't know. And then I just try to, you know, like I'm constantly trying to figure out how to make it funny or funnier. Um, and I have just a, I mean, I feel like I have a decent Rolodex of stories. I just don't know how to convert them into like, it seems like, for example, like uh, Mark Norman, like he'll have a story he's telling, but then every like, certain amount of time goes by and it's like a joke, a joke. It's like boom, boom, as they're going through the story and it's like bang, bang, bang. So that I think is like... Well, that's a recipe for a good story, right? Like because if you give people breadcrumbs of like humor, they're staying in tuned and then if you like pay it off with a big, you know, punchline at the end, that's like kind of what makes the story worth it. Yeah, I mean, I do feel sometimes with like some comedians when they tell stories... If anything, give too many breadcrumbs, and I'm like, just I want to hear the story. Mm-hmm. Although I, I feel that especially in podcasts, but that's just like, that's not really their fault as much. But like when they're like, you know, it's like a fun story, and then all of a sudden they'd be like, what about this? And I'm like, no, tell the story. Like I'm into the story <laughs> <Right>. part. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, I think yeah, it's just like you know, you kind of got to just do it and then see where they laugh, and it's just like having an opinion or like. Uh, along the way i think that's it maybe it's like the facts and then maybe the funny part is the opinion part like mm-hmm. the opinion you're having about the story or what's or, occurring or like your reaction to the moment right of the story yeah unless yeah. something is inherently funny like the guy that you're resuscitating is in a i don't know a funny costume <laughs> the like, guy he, you're resuscitating is a terrorist that <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly the plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's about, on his way to the cockpit he has a heart attack yeah yeah <laughs> You're like you're doing chest compressions, and there's like a bulletproof vest on. Him. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Like you, you figure out that he's got like a suicide vest or something because you have to touch his chest. Yeah, that's funny. And then it's like your Hippocratic oath is like, I do I save him? Or it's like a guy that, or it could be like even like a guy that pissed you. Like this would be a smaller believable detail. Is like mm. the guy you have to resuscitate is the guy that cut in front of you as you were getting in the line or whatever. That's like, you know, this the stoop like the less good right. idea, but like the the other the way. Oh, you it, know yeah. who I end up hating on the airplane is like the guy who gets the upgrade ahead of me. Like you ever get upgraded on a flight? I don't go on too many flights. Oh. I did go on one recently, but Oh, okay. Well, well, you're going to eventually, sure. right? So when you get upgraded, it's like the best thing ever cuz it's free money, you know. Okay. So you go on, you eventually get status on the plane, and then they upgrade you, and they're like, oh, you were in regular main cabin, here's first class. It's oh, that's cool. For free. So then you're uh, you're on a list most of the time. Like, someone might have better status, like higher status on the airplane than you, and then they get upgraded before you. And you can only see, like, the first three letters of their last name. Mm-hmm. I love it that I'm a doctor. And I travel all the time, and that's not ever even a consideration for me. I'm not even close to that category. Oh no! <laughs> well, you probably buy first class to jump to this to start, right? Or, you don't. My last one, I was literally sitting next to the bathroom on my way back from uh, out west, like last week. Yeah, like myself and my girlfriend were literally like in the last two seats. 
Well, Dude. that's the thing. It's like he's a doctor, but you don't know how many times he's been sued for malpractice. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. <laughs> that's where all my money um, goes. <laughs> Dude, you guys got to have me on a second time, and I'm going to interview you because you could get so many viral TikTok clips talking about being a doctor. It is insane. I know. I'll bring all the fucking questions. Uh, you guys, dude, you, you come in with the malpractice lines <laughs> and all that shit, and we'll get some good clips. I could just about, listen, I used to work at Beth Israel Hospital. Just that hospital alone, I have I have stories about having the saw off uh, cock rings that got stuck there. No way. I have guys that like basically like, you know, passed out, you know, we're not breathing, like heroin overdose. I like resuscitate them and they wake up and they look at me and I think like they're going to thank me and they basically tell me to go fuck myself because I ruined their high. Uh, I mean, I just have like, uh, like... It's What's like the like most visually like like people come in like bleeding like stabbed all the time or like I mean it depends where I'm working but I mean uh, I'd say probably the nastiest thing I've ever seen is I had a guy who actually this wasn't at Beth Israel this was out in California um, there was a guy who tried to commit suicide with like a 44 Magnum and he stuck it in his mouth and he shot himself. And um, this actually isn't that infrequent of a complication, but what happened was the gun kicked, and so instead of the bullet going up through his brain, it blew his whole face off. Oh. So the guy literally came in, like, uh, not only alive, but he had, like, no face, but he was, like, talking. It was, like, it, it was, it was, it's, a, like, literally, sometimes working in ER is, it's, like, being in a horror movie. Like, I don't even, like. What was he saying? I couldn't really make out what he was saying, but I was just like, you dude. Know. At that point, like, I was a fourth year medical student. You should student, just help just him like, fucking die. Yeah, right. <laughs> I like, I'm not like... living after that. I, yeah, and what the crazy part about it is literally like we. So first of all, like you kind of try to figure we like through all that net, like the messed up anatomy. You try to figure out like where the like the the air hole is basically because in any resus in any dude, resuscitation you go to airway this. you go to ABCs you go to airway breathing circulation so the first thing we do is you know obviously pop it like sedate him and put a an endotracheal tube a tube going into his lungs so we can breathe for him and put him to sleep so we can get him out of his misery and then we send him to the CAT scanner to see like how bad the damage is and we scan basically the the whole in a trauma situation like that you scan the whole body but you know obviously in that particular situation you want to see like what the damage was to the brain this guy completely missed his brain. I mean, everything, his cheeks were blown out, his whole jaw was blown out, his, literally, his eyes were, his eyes actually were there, but there was, like, flaps of skin. Dude, I can't even describe it. Please don't. Did he, did he, <laughs> did he survive? Is he still alive so, today? So, honestly, I have no idea. That day was the last time I saw the guy. Like, a lot of this stuff, like, you just have to check in and check out, or else, you know, you'll just... Yeah, like he went to some specialist after that. Sort I mean, of. yeah, he was admit he was probably in the hospital for you know. Are you kidding me? If the guy was suicidal before that, like after that, I'm definitely like, re yeah, I'm retrying. It's uh, you know, you make a really good point. It's not really. It's it's almost like it's so sad sometimes that you have to laugh. Well, you're either, you're either gonna laugh or you're gonna cry. Half the stuff I see, you either go home and cry about or. Or, or you have to like you have to have like uh, gallows humor about I'll it. Well, so you know? you know about my so my sister died like last year now. Oh, uh, but, sorry uh, to hear that, man. Thanks, but uh, so for Christmas, Horrible. my cousin got us uh, like it was. So she works at Union College. She got like a scholarship in my sister's name. That's uh -huh. awesome. Yeah, and so everybody's like around the tree. We're crying or like yeah, we're crying or whatever. And I'm like, uh, I said it wasn't even that great, but I was just like, oh, you know, like I really would have loved a PS5. <laughs> and like everybody laughed, and, like, and, and, and I, thank God because I was so uncomfortable. Pri like it just relieves awesome. the tension. Yeah. But then my buddy, he uh, he's a fireman, and I was talking to him about it, and he said that like he was describing like pulling a bar a burned body out of a car, and like the other firemen are like they made a joke like oh yeah get some of her ass too like they were like basically telling him to feel her up, and they all laugh and he's like it's just because like you need to do it or else like you really get fucked up if you yeah, don't right yeah, yeah. um. Yeah, you have to be like, and I feel like comedy is, I mean, as corny as it sounds, it is like the best medicine and it is like, because otherwise, like you can't, the yin and the yang of those situations, you can get so devolved into the trauma and the negativity that comedy is like the only thing that, you know, pulls you out of it. So if you can make a joke at a situation like that, that's like such a blessing, you know, it's like, uh. I mean, I had a friend who died recently, and like, uh, man, I tried to like, do, I tried to do a jo joke at his 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 uh, funeral, you know, like he uh, he actually 
he he unfortunately he he ran into a uh he was on his motorcycle he ran into a tesla and the irony of the situation is that he used to work for tesla oh really <laughs> he worked for tesla like when tesla first came out and he got in an argument with Elon Musk. Like he was in, like, there's this whole chain. Like he's like telling Elon Musk like what he has to do in South Florida. And Elon Musk fired him. Really? And so from then on, he hated Teslas. Mm. Like he like, and so at his funeral, I got up and I was like, Adam always hated Tesla. Uh, did they laugh? <laughs> People laugh. laugh. Oh, good, good. Oh, I did the God. way you started that story. It made it sound like it wasn't going to go over Cause well. Because uh, everybody knew he like he, you know he hit a Tesla. That's how he died. Oh man! So, At least uh, it didn't bomb. Holy and then, yeah. And then uh, what else did I do? I was like, uh, whatever. There was something about like he was all into like Chat GPT, and he actually he's like, I'm like, you know, Adam loved Chat, Chat GPT. I'm like, so I actually went into Chat, Chat GPT, and I asked Chat GPT, tell me a joke that I could say at the funeral of Adam Berlin. And this is what ChatGPT said. Funerals are not places for jokes to be said. It's very <laughs> that's appropriate. Awesome. And I just read that out to the crowd, and I'm like, I'm out later. That's great. No, that's that's really good. That's good. Um, damn, dude. Doctors. I tried. Uh, let me tried. ask you this. If you, okay, you have all the resources ready to go, like somebody comes in. and My question is, how much do they delay more than necessary in hospitals? Because I feel like you go in, and it's like, yeah, like it takes weeks to find out results or like all this stuff. Like, I mean, it, there's literally like a there's a there's an order of, of the, the the acuity. So in other words, like if you're not breathing, uh, you're going to be first in line. So we're going to bring you in. And like I was saying, you always go back to when you're like, oh shit, what am I doing here? I always literally go back to my ABCs: airway, breathing, circulation, disability, exposure, finger fully. Like I literally go through this, you know, whole like pathway it's an algorithm in my head so you know if you show up with hey like i'm just feeling like weak and dizzy and you're talking and whatever like it might take a long time for them to figure out that you have anemia or something like that but if you show up and you're not breathing well we're going to drag you off of the floor and immediately you know intubate you put you on a ventilator airway breathing we're gonna okay is he breathing do we need to breathe okay we're ventilating him that's breathing circulation is there a pulse okay there is no pulse why is there no pulse do an ekg are they in afib are they in ventricular tachycardia with no pulse do we need the shock do we need to give them like so you go down all these things and so my point is i kind of gave you a long twisted uh answer but it's all based on acuity, meaning like how severe the situation is, and those people always get priority. And to answer your question in addition, like it doesn't matter whether you are homeless on the street not breathing or whether you're the CEO of a corporation. When you come into the ER, you're not breathing, you're getting seen first. And if you don't, if you don't, it's funny because people are like, oh, you know, you're not treating us because, you know, you're not treating me well because of my insurance. Like if, I didn't treat you the same as somebody with no insurance who was homeless on the street. You would have the best lawsuit ever. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Last doctor question I'll ask you because <laughs> I'm a hypochondriac. So do you does seeing all this illness and all this stuff ever make you more worried about your own health or? No, actually, I'd say no because I got to tell you, like I see a lot of the same things. Uh, over and over and over again. Um, for example, like people who smoke cigarettes first and foremost, like, like that's probably the worst thing you could possibly do to yourself. Like, what about I just, vape? Um, I mean, I, I can't like the, the the evidence. I don't think is totally out there. I would prefer to see you know friends of mine vaping than smoking cigarettes. I prefer them doing nothing. I mean, anytime that you're burning like hot hydrocarbons and entering them into the alveoli of your lungs, you're going to break down those alveoli. You're going to cause blebs. You're going to cause some form of like uh, chronic obstructive, you know, pulmonary disease. Like it's just not a good thing. But um, so to answer your question though, I mean, does it make me more, more of a hypochondriac? Um, in medical school, it did because you read about all these different things and you're like, oh my God, I have that. I have to have that. But then in real life, when you get out there, it's totally like clinical practice and what you read about are two totally different things. And it's just funny too, because there's a lot of people who are like always talking about like these hypothetical things, like guys who don't even like see patients. I'm not going to name any names, but there's like some really famous YouTubers or people that are on YouTube and social have huge social media settings who are like, let's say, uh, professors at a particular medical school, but they never saw a patient. So they're kind of talking in theoreticals and like based on 
like evidence that they see in labs, but not really in the real, when you actually see patients coming in, like I've seen probably, I, I calculated something like 60,000 patients, just the patients, not alone the people around them in like a 20 year career. So I think you just kind of see the same things repeating themselves. And I think like, as long as I'm not smoking cigarettes, as long as I'm not shooting heroin, as long as, you know, uh, I stay away from, you know, I, you know, if you have that, like, you got to treat diabetes, you got to treat hypertension, you got to, you know, if you just do these certain things, you're going to be okay. Now, unfortunately, genetics are going to like put a fucking wrench in things. My dad died at 62. His dad died at like 59. So, you know, what's the probability I'm going to get past 60? It, I, I, I might not. So that's like the biggest issue, but you yeah. know, I, I see... I see people do things. My point is I see people do things that they could prevent and that kind of like, I try to like convey to them like, Hey, listen, like, like if they're not treating their diabetes, I'm like, do you like, do you know what can happen? They're like, yeah, yeah, I know it's not good for them. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, do you know what a dialysis machine is? No, what's a diet? I'm like, you were literally, you're going to get to a point where your kidneys are not going to work and you're going to be spending like three days a week hooked into a machine with a painful needle for like three hours at a time. And that's going to be your whole life. You're not going to be able to travel. Like, if you do travel, it's going to be a major thing. Like, do you want that? And they're like, oh, I never thought of it that way. So I have to kind of like paint pictures to people. And then a lot of times, like, you know, as an ER doctor, you don't really gain their trust because you're only like there for, you know, what, an hour or two with these people. They don't know you. So now I have my own clinics. It's, it's really cool because now I have the luxury of like getting to know these people and they like learn to trust me. And it's like, it's awesome. So, you know, I did emergency medicine for 20 years and now I'm just doing my own like, uh, musculoskeletal stuff like for the last three years. And it's been like really like a luxury that I get to like have these like cool relationships with the patients. That's why comedy is cool. Cause, uh, <laughs> I, I would have had to pay for all of this information. Otherwise I would have had to <laughs> fucking take out my insurance card that I lost by the way. I don't know where it is. Nice. And, uh, would have to find your ass on ZocDoc, no, which man, I wouldn't I mean, have picked you because you're ugly. Because <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're not a woman. <laughs> I've got some uh, good reviews. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, do you, you might, have any one-star reviews? Uh, probably. Wow. that That's okay. First know, of all, like the last we thing. We got to look it up. You got that was a TikTok clip. All the stuff you were, you know, cut out some of that stuff. But mm -hmm. then for the most part, that's a TikTok clip. You reading your one-star doctor reviews. God, that's a great. That would be really. That's good. really good. So <laughs> yeah. you could take that next time you do a pod, please. That's funny. Well, we'd like to thank you, Judson, for coming to the Sean and Krista. <laughs> yeah, <podcast. laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> no, but dude, like I'm telling you, it, it, you, I could make you a TikTok star, which, really? which I don't know if you want to be that. That's what I've been telling him, dude, because I've been helping him with social media, but he doesn't want to do the clips and stuff. Yeah, I do. Dude. I do. I just listen. My my whole thing. I just want to be part of the comedy community, even if I'm like the doctor for. He doesn't want to be to too to much of the doctor thing. I, I get it. I get it. it. You know? I can see how. I mean, even me, like I get shit on the like. Sometimes we'll be like, oh, he's a TikToker right. using his you know numbers. To, so I, I get that. Right. That is an unsatisfying route, but it also could open like doors to comedy that you did. Like, oh, that comedian that has like a really big TikTok, uh, or that doctor that has a very big TikTok is a comedian. Like, they'll get you on, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. get more spots and stuff. But, but I, I agree with you. Like, there's tons of content there. And, you know, Sean, we'd love to have you back. Yeah, I absolutely and, would. And make stuff with us. Cool. Dude, yeah. people, you'll get so big, people are going to hurt themselves just to go to the <laughs> ER where you're at, dog, <laughs> just so they can see you, the friggin' That's ER crazy. doctor. Uh, comedian. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand what you mean, though. Like, because as a supermodel, like, I want people to take me seriously. Yeah, when I'm on stage. of course. Yeah. I know. It's really hard being you on stage because everybody's like too erect to Dude. even laugh. I don't even know who thinks I'm funny or who's just trying to fuck who's, me. You just got to look at who's got a boner. Right. At, at right. least that's for the men. The right. women, you. <laughs> I don't know. All right, everyone, stand up. Let me check the bottom of your seat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I bet that happens for you in the ER. You got two. You're like, is this fluid coming from? <laughs> Never mind. Dude, I, I literally, I've probably been exposed to more bodily fluids than you want to know about. I've seen like. Actually, I do want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you? Oh, have you? Oh, he, have you ever had to testify in like a trial? Oh, yeah. As a witness, expert witness, as like how? Uh, all the above. I've been hired to do expert witness work. Uh, I've been uh, uh, deposed um, in, usually it's like closed sessions 
um, about like what happened during a case. Um, yeah, it's not when, when it's involuntary, it's not fun at all. Like, in fact, it like ruins your whole entire like, like just, it'll be like what, like gang violence or no, like, like what happened when he no, came? the worst is like, you'll, you'll get like a notice from an attorney and it'll be like, they'll, they will have like the family's like suit, like it'll be like somebody who died and like it'll be like it'll, they, they will have sued like 15 every doctor that ever touched the patient They're in suing. the last two years they sue every single one of them and Damn. you're like what like who like it's never even the ones that like you think are like you the don't ones even remember you. them right oh, oh no i've got a great one Here, this is a good one okay so i'm in miami beach right I'm, i actually used to be an er doctor in miami beach and so memorial day weekend is like hip-hop weekend and in hip-hop weekend, sometimes gun violence uh, occurs. Is that uh, something that's, like, affiliated with hip-hop guns? Uh, it, not I, normally. Not normally. So, right? anyway, so, basically, uh, I'm working at this this ER, and it's not a trauma... So there's a trauma center across the, across the like, the inter, intercoastal called uh, Jackson, which is where, like, if somebody gets shot, that's where you bring that person because they have a whole trauma team. I was at Mount Sinai, which is like a local community uh, hospital. So over the over the uh, the radio, the EMS like, hey, we got like you know a 22 year old male shot to the back of the you know uh, shot to the shoulder. You know we're gonna bring him by, and the chief, uh, the, the head nurse, like Dr. Crosby, you got to get on the radio and tell these guys to go to the trauma center. Like we're not prepared to take care of this. So I get on the phone. I'm like, hey, how you doing? It's Dr. Crosby. I'm the you know I'm the uh, the attending here tonight, and they're like, I'm like, what is it that you have? They're like, yeah, we got this like 22 year old guy. He just got shot. Um, it looks like it's in the shoulder, the back of the shoulder. Um, he's doing okay. His vitals shine. I'm like, okay, let me just repeat what you told me. You just told me that you have a 22 year old man who's got penetrating trauma to the posterior thorax and you have an entry wound and you don't have an exit wound. So basically what that means is that bullet could have gone in any trajectory. It could be sitting in his heart right now. It could be sitting next to his aorta. And so we don't have the, if that guy crashes in the middle of our ER, we don't have a trauma team. We don't have a thoracic surgeon. We don't have like all of the things that you would need. And I'm like, listen, I'm like, I hi I'm not telling you not to come here, but I highly recommend that you bring him across the, you know, to, to Jackson, it's only a mile away. So they're like, okay, whatever. I go see some more patients literally in like, I don't know, five, like I come out of a room five minutes, there's a paramedic there and he's like, Hey, what's up? Um, were you the, the doctor on that uh, call? And I'm like, yeah, the guy about the, and he's like, yeah, he's like, I just need to get your, what's your Dr. Crosney. Okay, cool. And he writes down my name. Oh, fuck. And then he walks out. I see him on, I'm like, that was kind of weird that he just wanted to get my name. I see him walk out of the ambulance ramp and get into an ambulance and then take off. And I'm like, you don't think that that was the guy who actually called. You don't think the patient's in that ambulance, do you? So anyway, don't think anything about it. A week later, lawsuit. Really? That guy, that that firefighter slash ambulance driver, like, you know, EMS guy, went back into the ambulance, told the patient, the doctor doesn't want to see you. We have to go. Here's his name. No. Damn. So did, did that have that lawsuit end? So I literally had to go. So like, you know, once again, like you get you know, your risk management calls you and they're like, Hey, you know, and you know, you feel like a bucket of shit because you're trying to like do whatever you can. Did the guy die? So thank God he was fine and he didn't die. Um, but I basically had to go on my day off, had to go to this attorney, had to like, you know, talk about the case, talk about like what I did, what, you know, and they were like, you know, I don't really see any causality here. He did the guy. Thank God didn't have in order to have a, a, a tort. You have to have the four D's. Um, there's like duty, which is means that there was a relationship. There has to be like dereliction. Uh, so to, in other words, you have to be there has to be like negligence. And as a cause of that negligence, there, there has to be injuries that are from direct causally related to your negligence. So none of like there was a duty, meaning I had a relationship because I was speaking about him, but there was no neglect that le led to any injuries that then led to him having a problem. So therefore, it didn't fit all those criteria of a tort. And therefore, they're like, yeah, I, I don't really know where they're going with this, but we'll just shelf this. We got your depth. You know, we got your information. We got your, you know, uh, story about what happened and we'll just wait and see what happens. And nothing ever happened. And it just got like dropped. But you'd be like, oh, no problem. But literally every single time now when I apply for another state license, a job anywhere, I have to 
give all of the details of that particular case. I have to actually show the releases that say that I never got like convicted or that they're not convicted. You know, there was no judgment to get that I was released. It's like, it follows me everywhere I go for nothing. Like if my mom got shot in South Beach that night, I would tell them to take her to Jackson. Right. Do not bring her to my hospital. She'll die here. Yeah. You know? And like, it's just, it's insane. So, did that EMS guy, you never had an interaction with him again? I never had an email. I never had an interaction with him. I knew, you know, I got his name and I was like, you know, th nothing's going to ever happen with this. Like, I can't, there, there's nothing I could possibly do to this guy because they basically have like, uh, what is it called? Uh, if you work for the town, uh, if you work for Miami Dade uh, Fire Department, you basically have, uh, I forget what the term is. Basically, immunity or something? It's like immunity. Hmm. So I was just like, you know what? Just like everything else, like seeing the guy shot in the face. Like, I you just have to walk in a shift and walk out and just like brush your shoulders off and just like because <laughs> there's going to be a whole list of other stuff that's going to go on the next time. So if you like perseverate over these things, you're just gonna lose your mind and you know. Damn, dude. Yeah. Crazy. So uh, let's shift gears because uh, we only have a few minutes left. Uh, you know, I think some of the things that people want to hear are like you know, what, what motivates you probably, um, you know, what are you afraid of? Uh, mm. what is it that you might have advice for some people? Um, become a doctor, <laughs> uh, dude, uh, what motivates me? These stories for sure. Yeah. That, that's exciting. No, uh, Hmm. I, I don't really know, to be honest. I'm still figuring it out. Uh, I feel like when I was younger, I just like wanted to be do movies and TV and stuff, but I think it came from like possibly wanting to be famous, and uh, that desire becomes less and less all the time. So, uh, but I do enjoy like making art or whatever, like movies and or or just like writing, and I like music and stuff. So, I'm gonna keep chugging along and see see what uh what I decide to do or what what comes my way, but. Still figuring it out, I think. I think that's okay. Yeah. yeah. I think that's an important thing to also show that vulnerability. For right? sure, yeah. Um, yeah, because sometimes I'll do pods like this, and I and I guess, like, to me, I don't feel like anybody, so sometimes these questions are especially hard because I'm like... Well, I don't think you have to be anybody but who you are as a human, right? Right. Like, uh, you know, for us, we're just trying to talk to people who are known for being cool. Interesting. So, like, I don't care about any of the other i just think you're funny thanks all right yeah. i appreciate uh, that but like i'm also a tough critic so. <gasps> i broke this i knew you <laughs> fucking do that i'll I knew get you it. a new one dude you i'm know, sorry that's, that's from uh that's from Mer uh hermes that is a three thousand dollar i will buy you uh, a clip. four thousand dollar clip uh, dude thank god damn it's one it that i've been looking for <laughs> my 88 you warned me in the beginning i knew it i mean it was more about this but Did you still. know i'm a doctor too i yeah i can tell dude do some surgery <laughs> Surgery on this, all right. Yeah, take this to the OR, see if we yeah. can get some together. Um, yeah, so that's mostly me in a nutshell. Uh, I feel like, well, yeah, what are you afraid of, though? What am I afraid of? Yeah, mm. it could be anything, but like, you know, what's herpes? Uh, maybe being shunned. Shunned, yeah. Well, could you elaborate? Just like people disliking me. Are, are you one of those like people pleaser? Um, sometimes, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I feel the same way. Yeah, like, I'm always like really nervous if people like me or not. I want everybody to like. Me. Yeah, for sure, yeah. same. Um, so, uh, and I'll like you even more if you forgive me for breaking your clip. I you <laughs> All right, sick, Don't worry, sick. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that's for sure. I guess maybe like being uh what is it called when you uh wow this feels this feels like balls like did you feel those that? are balls no dude. but like feel the oh <laughs> dude it feels like balls it's dude. like i'm at camp all over again <laughs> feel that you see it's like the sack <laughs> yeah. i uh, got one over here <laughs> sorry did i make you depressed by <laughs> coaxing out of you all these stories sorry no it's good it's like therapy okay no, cool i got a free really, therapy you know session. what you are you're a really good interview you, you have think? your own podcast no i just i well i i did at one point but i didn't enjoy it because it was a lot of just like I'd have people on it was like open mic friends and it was just like the same old questions yeah. and like the same answers you know but this is like I can interview somebody when I'm genuinely curious yeah. it's just it's not even like a place of interviewing <laughs> although there was a little bit like how do I coax a TikTok clip out of you for sure but <laughs> but more so I'm just like 
I could ask questions for days. That's such a cool. Dude, like, you're you're great. We would love to have you. We have yeah. four microphones, so we could we could triple team one person. Okay, so we're know? gonna fucking triple uh, triple penetrate you. We we uh, <laughs> we have four microphones, but we only have two stands. No, no, we have two more stands. I'm just a stupid Greek piece of <laughs> shit, and I forgot them. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um. Hopefully, you got another clip. Yeah. I'll get you a new one though. <laughs> Actually, I like I like holding this yeah it's it kind of feels natural yeah because right? uh, yeah I, I honestly uh next time i'll probably hold yeah yeah <laughs> all right cool. nice i'm holding right now but yeah that's cool uh so you know we discussed some of your fears but we didn't get to like advice that you have for people like or maybe it's maybe it's for somebody who okay like let's put it this way right like for me i'm always worried about being like a good stand-up but also like making good clips so that I'm constantly in the conversation, mm. but that also forms like an addictive sort of, you know, like you talked about before, but at the end of the day, like, you know, that, that those views and that kind of stuff, like doesn't translate into real life. Right. Like that's the, I mean, sometimes, it yeah, does. sometimes yeah. it does for sure. But like, there are a lot of younger kids who would love to be like TikTok famous for sure or, or all that kind of stuff. But like, disregarding that right what's your advice to anyone who kind of wants to follow a similar path to you what's advice to younger you that you probably would give mm. you know anything like that that's like uh you you want to walk away from this conversation having shared um well i guess like as a lot of kids want to be like youtube famous and there's a guy i know that i love watching that makes like bad content like he wants to be youtube famous but like i would almost argue doesn't have it or he does but He's got like the drive, but like just no charm, and it's just is like it he doesn't. What? Is no, it it's not you. It's not you. <laughs> God, dude. Uh, he'll never watch this either. I'm sure of it. But uh, like, so they just want to be YouTube. Like they don't. Like they just want to be an influencer, and they want to be famous, and mm -hmm. not necessarily like. And so I think that if like that's you, then maybe like try and really. I, I don't know how to, because I feel like even that was me at one point, and mm -hmm. and at times probably still is. But like I think you kind of have to like really imagine the world where like like there's times where i've been like oh i want to be a youtuber and they're like oh actually no i don't like you have to make videos so consistently mm -hmm. you end up having to make stuff you don't enjoy it's like and it, like and the way you make money is like the most like gross way right yeah i guess it's like maybe just figure out what it is you would enjoy doing because i have a so let, put it this way right like i have a ramen instagram page that like I made in the dawn of Instagram where that actually gets me free meals all the time. Sure. Right. But like the comedy stuff, even if I have like 40 million views on a video, like literally no money, no benefit, maybe like a club booker will be like, Oh, that's cool. Maybe there's like some social media cachet, but like the micro influencer ramen thing is like the advice I would give, for example, to like a younger person that's interested in, you know that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, like some people want to be like a personality, like a famous personality. I get, yeah, and that's fine. I think that's like, I guess just do it. It's probably better to enjoy it for like the process mm -hmm. of doing it more than it is like the end result. Like, don't do it because you want to be famous. Like, if that's just your goal, I don't know if that's a good goal, mm -hmm. right? Like, maybe just like do it because you like making videos and the and the secondary is oh you would be famous and so that's cool don't do it like i want to be famous so i will make youtube videos i think that is where people go wrong but i mean you could still experiment and be like well let me see if i like doing youtube videos mm -hmm. but then if you don't don't be like well i need to do this so i can be an influencer well do you have any other hobbies uh yeah yeah, what, I like boxing like? and stuff. Yeah, I've seen that. Are you good? Do you do jiu jujitsu? Too? Uh, I've done like a few classes. I wrestled in high school. Oh, me too. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, you love jujitsu. I saw. Wait, I saw a video of you boxing, man. You're really good. You got good hands. Thanks. Yeah, I haven't like really fought in a long time, but uh, do you want to fight right now? No, I'm okay. <laughs> Maybe after the show. Uh, but yeah, so I like doing stuff like that. Like, and I, yeah, that's what's cool. Like, and th it becomes easier to make videos go viral when you have like more of a premise like that. Like, like a hobby that you could tie it to. Yeah, or? like okay. if you attach like like even with Judson and being a doctor, like I could think of a thousand videos that he could make to go viral. But like, whereas if it was just like, I don't know, my buddy that is like a waiter at the moment, which is fine. But like, there's less there to 
make something about. Well, actually, with a waiter, you can make video. Like I could, again, there's a premise there. If mm-hmm. you're just a guy in a room, like that wants to be famous, that's harder than being like, right. like you said, a guy with hobbies. Yeah, like, like the niche, that's what I was saying yeah. kind of with the ramen for like those younger people that want right, to do right. it. That's the better route. For think, sure. Yeah. And also, like if that's something that brings you joy, the benefits from that like brand affiliation, for example, like if you were a boxer kind of influencer, right? you know, then Everlast sends you a pair of gloves or something like right. that, right? And then you're, like, more happy about it versus, like, I get messages from fucking, like, weed edible people, and they're just like, oh, promote our edibles. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I have a lot of 14-year-old followers. I'm not going to promote edibles. Right, like, right. Know? Um, The reverse, too, is, like, yeah, like, if you do do something like, like, you keep it, like, if you get make a YouTube channel filleting fish, like, teach people how to do that, like, don't expect to easily... Then turn around and make a video where you're like, "Oh, I'm actually a rapper now." Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. Like, it's going to be and like, hey, the the cool thing, I guess, like you, but you have a built-in audience that at least there will be a bunch of people that might like it. So mm-hmm. there is some like, but pivoting is hard. Once but it's it is hard. Yeah. But that's why, and I've said it before, I like Jake Paul to some extent because the more the better he gets at boxing. It's just cool to see him pivot from YouTube into something and then use his audience to become good at it or to like. Well, do you think that maybe that's part of it? Like he kind of because you're at like a mature phase, right, where you're now realizing it's not about like being famous or stuff like that. Do you think he's had sort of the same conversation with himself? Where he's like, actually, I don't feel fulfilled doing this. Like, oh, for sure, yeah, I can't imagine. Like, cause, like, why else would he? Uh, and I'm sure, like, the hate that he got, I don't think he likes that either. Mm-hmm. And like the the youth, cause he was a vlogger that made like kind of not so great raps, and like, yeah, was like the yeah. So I I do think the pivot for sure was like giving giving him gave him a purpose beyond just like. Again, because it's hard to be a personality. It's like, what do you make videos about all the time? If right. you, that's all you are, right? It's like you can only have fun with your friends so much. Yeah. Then they leave, and it's like, well, shit. How do I? I gotta throw a party to have a vlog or whatever. Like, so something to consider. Mm-hmm. And, and what are you looking for in a woman? <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, what am I looking for in a woman? The clitoris, am I right? I'm, I'm in there looking. I can't fi- seem to find it. We put uh, out a video, video about that. Yeah. He was yeah. the designer it was a of the vagina. Video. Oh, yeah. really? Like the ana- breaking down the anatomy? Yeah, yeah he like, was the uh, chief, what was it, the chief engineer on the project? Yeah, like, so I worked at uh, Fang. I won't name them. Uh, and, like, you know, a lot of, like, systems are designed by engineers without, like, a product manager to, like, make it user-friendly. Right. So it's, like, really put together by, like, a nerd that, like, just doesn't know the end user. Right. So we thought it would be funny if, like, God ran, ran like, the world like a tech company. Oh, that's funny. And, like, all the problems with the vagina were because, like, me as an engineer didn't have a product manager like him. To, oh, like, that's funny. Yeah. And I came down and just started being like, yeah, like, this is wrong and this is wrong, like, talking about things that happen with the vagina in real life and like why would you put this so close to this and why would you do this and he's like just going well you know we did that and he's like naming these like obscure like languages coding languages you know we yeah yeah they're like they don't know javascript like yeah (laughs) yeah yeah. yeah. it's because they're they're always coming up with excuses like why something is the way it is right so uh that's funny I also like the idea of you being in an emergency room having to find the cl- like I don't know why I don't know any <laughs> but just being like clitoris and like oh, everybody's like you what talking about having to find a credit one time I was in the ER I actually had to uh one of the nurses came up to me and she's like uh yeah there's a um there's a female here but she's actually had a transition she used to be a man and now she's claiming to be a female, and we don't know what uh, room to put her in. Now we can't upload this. Thanks a fuck. <laughs> Wait, so you you didn't know what? Why? I thought there all the rooms are. So they're either female or male rooms. I didn't know that. So in order to go to a female room, uh, they're like you have to go check her. I'm like check her anatomy. Yeah. Well, why, why does the room matter if you like? If isn't it? Just well, because like- there was no. There were. I'm sorry. There were multiple people. In the room. So oh, like, so uh, she didn't want to be in a room with biological males. Not she, but just the policy of the hospital at that time, which was 2003, 2002, when I was doing my residency, was that, you know, in order to go to a female room, you had to have 
a vagina. Mm -hmm. So this woman is claiming she has a vagina. This woman who used to be a man is claiming, she, doctor, you're Dr. Crosney, you're the chief resident, you need to go in this room. So I had to go in the room and be like, hey, how you doing? I'm Dr. Crosney. I know this is kind of a awkward request, but uh, the head nurse told me that I need to check to see if you really have a vagina to see if you can go to this room. And she was like, no problem. Really? And showed me a very, very, very nice looking vagina. Convincing yeah. looking vagina. Dude, I, I don't think I that's feel, that weird. I had to do that in Thailand all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the, I'm not going to lie. That sounds like something today that would be like a lawsuit if, right. if you had to ask them to uh, show you. Well, their I guess because he's a doctor, you. it's probably okay, right? I don't know. Like, what do you think? If you had to do that today, don't you think they I might? think that no matter what, it's just a position that definitely takes a little bit of artistic discretion yeah. yeah you have to just you know i think it has to do a lot with the delivery of your question hmm. you know well said like Wait, a politician <laughs> like a politician <laughs> right what do you well, think we need to hear besides the g spot and the clitoris like what sean is looking for in a woman so we could put paid advertising behind uh, us okay and, uh billionaire dad what billionaire brand dad? what brands should they be wearing <laughs> <laughs> what brands i am whatever suggest whatever billionaire daughters wear yeah yeah <laughs> Are and, you sure you could handle that though? Um, I want like a cool, like a, I want like a, her dad to be kind of like Judson, just like <laughs> super, like yeah, like down to down to clown, you know. Yeah. He, I feel like he'd be like, if if you had a daughter, you don't have. Kids. He does have do, a daughter. A She's like daughter. twelve. Oh, okay, yeah, never 10. mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> <Really 10 years. laughs> Shifting gears. No, well, in many many, years, I feel like you'll be the kind of dad to be like, yo, let's go like golfing or something. Like you'd be a cool. Father-in-law. I'd like to take my uh, son-in-law surfing yeah. for sure. Surfing, Sweet. snowboarding, skateboarding. Yeah, you don't seem like the type that'll one day have to be like, get out of my house. Like, unless, Maybe. unless you know, unless it's Maybe if warranted. Yeah, I mean, well, I think my father-in-law. Let me see your genitals and make sure that they're. <laughs> 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 my father-in-law looks like Jackie Chan. Like uh, really? Like Jackie Chan. Oh, yeah. interesting. Oh, so you're married? Yeah, I'm married. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, but for the late, no, nah, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, he lo looks straight up like Jackie Chan, and every time I fly to Japan and like hang out with him, he just gets pissed drunk with me. Like over, that's cool. Yeah. Oh shit, we're yeah we're running out of time. All right, Sean. Anything else you want to share with people? Um, to say about this pod what you like, what question? Uh, solicit questions. I'm going to solicit questions for you based on being an ER doctor, so that you have something to use in the next episodes awesome man let's well, do why it. don't let's you just come on the next episode i'll definitely will i definitely will but yeah. also answer and then you can follow me on instagram sean malay m-i-l-l-e-a cool cool yeah well thanks so much for coming on man we really appreciate yeah that great time. let's go do this show huh yeah you're the man let's dude do sweet we eat you just so likable you know thanks yeah, hopefully good. your audience thinks so too what time this show's eight or eight thirty uh eight is when the doors open okay so cool yeah right, but cool. i gotta go early because i gotta handle the barkers and shit cool Oh, All you right. have barkers? Well, First this one. wraps up. Uh, close the door behind you. Sean Millay, not Millia, Millay. Dude. I'm Dr. Judd, and we got Christos. Thank you for uh, co hosting. That was a fun episode, and we'll see you next time. Okay, thanks. There's somewhere I can piss. Yeah. yeah. So through the door here, go right over there. Pull that door this way.